up everybody? We got another S2000 over here. Turbo. You can see it looks like it has no intercooler, but it's an air to water setup. He's actually bringing in the ice. We're gonna put ice in this thing. Nice and cool INTs. She's gonna be ready to party. We're just gonna go ahead and load it up, put on a dyno and uh, start tuning her. Taking out the old fuel, I mean, not old fuel, old water, and put fresh ice in it. The last time we tuned this thing, it made, what did it make last time? 850? 855. Um, that was a different motor though. Yeah, and then the clutch loosened up or something, right? Yeah, it kept happening. I ended up uh, just uh, pulling the whole flywheel and twin plate off. I ended up going with a different uh, flywheel and single plate now. I haven't had any issues. It's on uh, about 16 pounds right now, I think. Yeah, there's two 500s in there, and there's a 340, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then last time I think we had issues with, you said the wiring was too small, so mm -hmm. I changed all that up for bigger. It's 10 gauge, huh? Yeah. You gotta be careful too, those 525s, they flow so much that sometimes they can uh, drain this before the 320 fills it up. Oh, really? Are you draining back into the, the search tank, right? Yeah, so it... It goes, goes search, and when you return, you return to the search tank, then the search tank, when it overfills, returns to the gas tank, right? Yep. Okay, cool, that's the proper way. I had, a, I had a Supra a long time ago, they were returning back to the fuel tank, and the 525s, they were, um, they were emptying out the search tank before the 450 could fill it up. <laughs> Lock the fuel pressure at 58, at uh, 56. You saying it's still too low? No, no, it's good now, but okay. earlier the fuel pressure was so low it was causing it to break up. So when you first came in, it was only making like 96 horsepower until I got the like. Uh, right. Yeah. What's that? Oh wow. Like literally through the earmuffs it was hurting my ear on this side. <laughs> so I'm testing the timing right there. Boost was 16, 17 pounds and made 457. So now I'm gonna start ramping boost in. But you can see where we started on the low end. Some of that, and then cleaning up the AFR, and now just it's gonna come down to start throwing boost at it. So right here, we're when we get into VTEC, it's choking down a little bit. So this is the fuel trims. That's our corrections. We need to add a little bit more fuel. Seven pounds of boost, 27 pounds of boost. Um, our target was 11.48. Uh, no, our 11.58. We hit 11.48. So I need a 
fine tune the closed loop lambda correction. She's doing pretty well. So now we're just gonna have to. We have the map already scaled, so we're just gonna have to turn up the boost and fine tune it. It's only like a five percent, uh, no, less than a two percent adjustment I'm doing on the fuel. I guesstimated the fuel map, so you can see it. See what our fuel pressure was like. Our fuel pressure was 78 and our injector duty is 58%. So that's good. So we got plenty of fuel. It was about same same boost, but it made actually less boost than it did earlier. But the reason it picked up so much power is I increased timing. So when I increased the timing, the EGTs went down. Therefore, it made less boost, but the motor's efficiency went up. And you can see now my knock threshold went up a little bit more, but I'm still way below on the on the knock threshold. So it's got a little bit more timing left in it, but I'm gonna actually throw a boost at it and then at the end give a little bit more timing see if I can squeeze it in. But let's check everything on it real quick before we start getting into high boost. Add more. IATs are going up so the IATs are going up right there the IATs got up to 145 149 actually so it's too hot at 44 pounds of boost so we're gonna put some ice in it everything else looks good made 953 86 degrees so like on a cold night that 953 is more like a 970 980 but Now it's going up to 40, 45 pounds to 7,300. And then by red line, well not by red line, but you can see here at 8,400, we're dropping down to 40 pounds. The spring is too soft. So either we need a four pound boost controller, a four port, or a, uh, we need a stiffer spring or a bigger exhaust housing. Cause I think it's got too much back pressure, but cool. All right, we're good. That's all, that's all she's got. Fuel map, the target, AFR, everything looks perfect on it. So, I mean, we've done what, like six pulls at an over 940 now? Yeah, everything looks perfect. Too. Change the AR, I can remote in. Change the spring pressure to 20, or if you put a four port boost controller. But honestly, if you just change the spring pressure to 20, because 
I mean, you don't really need to run less than 20 pounds of boost in this thing anyways. So if you put 20 pounds and then uh, if you change the AR, and it's because right now it's making like 700 foot pounds of torque. Right. It's a lot of torque, so we don't care about torque. So get rid of that torque peak and then it'll just carry the power all the way up top. The good thing is right now you don't have to rev it that high. You don't have to rev it, you just go up to nine grand and she'll fly. <laughs> Probably just get rid of that whole exhaust thing too, huh? You can. How big is the rest of the exhaust? Because it looks like three, three inch at the end. Three and a half? Okay. Yeah, there's no pressure, nothing. It's like a nicely built motor for once. Because I literally, on S2000 motors, I have more faith sometimes on stock motors and built ones. Right. Because a lot of people will um, cheap out on stuff. And then, Does this have that 6.6 .6 valve stem or no? Uh, I believe it does. <laughs> the only thing is, uh, if you don't have the 6.6 .6 valve stem, yeah, you don't want to do yeah, I found out the wrong, the hard way. I actually didn't know. I was doing two step on my S2000. It was making like 40 pounds of boost. <laughs> when I took the head to the machine shop, they're like, "Yeah, all your exhaust valves are bent." And then I did the 6.6 .6 valve stems. Never had issues after that. Are you gonna run this at the track or? Mm -hmm. How do you shift that tranny? I like. I'm having a hard time shifting it on the dyno. Because the gears are so close, I don't know which is which. So it's not bad if you go in order. Really? Yeah, like I, just trying to find fifth sucks. But yeah. if you go like one, two, three, four, five, it's not that bad. I'm just so scared of going fourth and going right. back to third on this thing. Right. Like if I was driving it, sketchy.